Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ezo, and today we're gonna go over a preliminary Z build for Season 7. Now, this is most likely not my final build. This is just a response to um, a lot of people asking me for a Z build for this season, or for this preseason with all the new items. Um, and the fact that I'm kind of low on time right now, so I just want to give you a quick response. This is not gonna be an extremely detailed video, obviously. Um, but I will get back to you with a proper Z school video. Um, properly explaining all the items and what I think about them and my favorite build orders and such. This is just me updating you on what I build right now and just a little bit of backstory behind that. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump straight into it. For starting items, I am going longsword and then we have the endless debate about refillable potion versus self potions and it's not an endless debate, it's a pretty easy debate actually. Um, refillable is almost always better. Um, if we're talking about a gold value sense. But the problem with League of Legends is that you can't always look at gold value for what's actually good. Um, now, I know that pretty much every single pro player runs refill the potion and that says something about the item, but um, in my experience and in my opinion, if I would recommend something, I would still recommend health potions over that. I still think refill is better, but I personally run health potions. And... Like, if you can manage refillable potion in early game, if you play in such a way that you can manage having less HP, like less HP region, uh, you do get more value for it, but in my experience, in my opinion, the the gold value of the, the refillable potion isn't worth as much as the pressure you can exert with three health potions, so I still think it's better, um, but... <laughs> I don't know, just better, it's not a good way, word to use here, because I still... <clears throat> I prefer the health potions, but I think the refillable is better. And of course, in the end, just run whichever you're comfortable with. They both work fine, and anyone who tells you otherwise is, well, they don't actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> Narcissism. Anyway, um, I run Warding Totem on that, because that would imply I know what I'm talking about, which... I run Warding Totem with that, because... duh. As for early game... Um, this is a kind of retro build, actually, because we're going back to um, Cutlass again. Which is awesome, because Cutlass is a great item, and I'm really glad that uh, people are starting. I don't know if a lot of people started building it again, but I hope people are going to build it again. I build it again, because it's really, really good. Especially since Bork got buffed recently uh, to 8% again, so again, really retro here. We're going back to the roots. Um, but it's really good, especially with the new ultimate, that kind of requires you to um, kill people with a death mark to get 80, um, well, to kind of compensate for the 80 you lost on the W, which, not going into that in this video, but it's a solid item. Um, it also is magic damage, which is super nice, so uh, all, all in all, it's just a very solid item. Rush it, and if you can get it on the first buy, that's first back, that's optimal. Though it is a little bit expensive, um, I think it's still worth the price. Boots, I am notorious for um, being very, very, very late with my boots on Zed, um, but I think you can very often afford to just get an early pair of boots. It doesn't hurt, and um, it helps a lot with staying alive. Warhammer is not nerfed yet, yet, so... Um, as a solid third item out of the component items. I know you're not building it towards anything yet with that, like, we're building two fragmented items here, uh, two segmented items, uh, item pieces, like, out of two complete items. Um, but the good thing is uh, Cutlass doesn't really need to be completed into Bork. It works very well in its, in its Cutlass form, and you don't really need to rush a completed item to still be effective here, so... Uh, and this is also depending on if you're running cooldown reduction or not, if you can manage all the way until like, what, 2,900 gold before you have your Warhammer? Um, you know, until you have your 10%, if you can manage on 0% CDR with that, otherwise rushing it is not, like, there's no problem with that, because it's also, the problem with Cutlass is that it's a bit low on AD, for its 1,500 gold value is a little bit low AD, I mean, the lifestyle is nice, but... You know, you you gotta actually utilize that to have uh, have it have a good effect. 
but you know, uh, these are also kind of situational order. I think Cuddles first is really nice, but I'm not gonna say anything against Warhammer first. And I could see myself doing it several times in oh, many games where I feel like I need a lot of CDR early game if I didn't take it in runes. In, that ca in which case, I think Cuddles is almost. No, objective is a bad word, but Cuddles is very, in that case very good. An optional early game start would be with Hex Drinker or Tiamat. Um, Hex Drinker, obviously, if you're running against AP. Not just one AP, but if if you need you can you can do it against one AP. It does make your final build a bit wonky because your extra item is um, taken by a hex drinker essentially, and then you would have a full build with just Bork on top of the standard. But it's it's fine actually. Uh, Tiam is a good uh, replacement for Cutlass. It's a very good way to both to have a very uh, shove heavy playstyle. It works well for. Not just roaming, but uh, split pushing late game or de pushing in particular. But my main use of Tiamat is smashing. Like, if you're absolutely stomping, Tiamat is a fantastic item for that. And of course, add a Warhammer onto that. Now, mid game, late game. Again, I'm notorious for finishing your boots late, which is why I'm going to recommend finishing your boots not too late. But you definitely don't have to finish it before your first. I, I should probably not be recommending people to do this. Um, Finish your boots, not too late. Get the Black Cleaver as your first completed item. It is unbelievably good. Still not nerfed, um, but not OP though. So, I mean, if any writer is listening to this, absolutely not. Why would any writer listen to this? Anyway, it's a really good, um, it's a really solid item. It helps you stay effective. And with the Cutlass, it works really, really well for ultimates because, I mean, it, it doesn't synergize specifically with Cutlass, but in combination with the uh, the cutlass enhancing your ultimate, and uh, the, the black cleaver actually makes your ultimate pop stronger because with every attack after you've ulted them, you shred armor more and more and more, and then when the pop actually comes, the armor is very very shredded, which is why I love it. It has such a great synergy with Zed's ultimate, and this is now that Yomas is nerfed, this is probably my favorite item. Was that I could never see myself not building this. Such a great item. Um, after that, it's a bit more tricky. So, Yomas is the item that was hit the absolute most in the nerfs, and it it really pains me to see because this used to be my absolute tier one favorite item, Rip Ridlizer. Um This is not very good anymore because Lethality is <laughs> Lethality is a strange concept that I really don't want to dive into this video, but. The only thing you have to know is that it's not too bad to go it as a like 2.5th item because um, you're going Cutlass, Black Lever, that's 1.5, and then Yomus, which is 2.5. But you can also afford to do it like this uh, with Bork first. The only problem with Bork, with Black Lever into Bork, is that the AD from Black Lever Bork is super low. We're talking 75 AD for a total of what, 6,500 gold? That is not a lot of AD. You do weigh up for it because you get armor shred, which is better than armor penetration in a way, um, because the armor of the person is actually reduced, so if anyone else hits them, it's, you know. And Bork obviously uh, gives attack speed, so you get more value for your attack damage, which is, which is why I always was a great, which was a huge supporter of Black Lever back in the day. But, um, and of course you get lifesteal, so you get a lot of utility with the, with the slow and the movement speed, and the movement speed on, on Black Cleave and the HP and, and like fat CDR, but the fact remains that we're talking about 75 AD for 6,500 gold, which is why you can still afford to wait and get Yomus, because at that point you also balance out uh, CDR to 30% or 40% if you already have 10% in, in runes, in which case I would say this is probably better. Um, because the the word clear on Duskblade is pretty nice. The only problem with Duskblade, and this is this is why I, I kind of fucking hate the lethality items. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I kind of dislike the lethality items because I, I feel like you shouldn't build any of them first. The only one you should build first is Edge of Night, and I'm still not sure if I like that item. Because Duskblade relies on... Okay, quick, quick explanation of that. Duskblade relies on you having a lot of lethality to be valuable. Like... That's not all the item is, but essentially they're saying they want you to have a lot of lethality, which means you want to buy the other items first. 
However, <clears throat> you don't want to buy Yomus first because Yomus has 20 lethality, and with the formula, you lose the most lethality on buying Yomus. Like, you lose the most arm penetration on buying Yomus. At least, like, when you buy it early, the earlier you buy it, the more you lose. Because they will be lower level, you get a, a lower percentage of the 20. So you don't want to buy it first. You also don't want to buy Duskblade first. And if you're not playing against AP, well, you don't want to buy Age of Night either. So which fucking item do you want to buy? Which is why um, my build doesn't start with any lethality at all. And it's only at this point where it's not as big of a deal. It's not very good. But I think Duskblade is fine because um, if it, you ju I just like to imagine that the that the Night Stalker thing just isn't the the main concept of the item, which is why I think this is like the optimal way of doing it. Because now now we're talking about a more solid power punch. So because now we're getting 50 AD with the 25 AD, so we're still still talking about the the 75 AD, but then you add a 65 AD on top of that. So you're still you you're staying relevant in the power curve, and you're adding le extra lethality. So now you're getting a ton of lethality, and now it's actually starting to get value. And then you you run it off with with Bork, giving you more consistency, more utility. You know, overall, I think this is the smoothest way to build all of this um, so far. Like I said, I'm still I'm still working and, and testing this out. I haven't had too much time to play too many games, um, but this might also work because I, I just love the Yomus active. And if I have uh, no CDR, which I usually don't run, it's just pretty good. So, but if you prefer another way, obviously, I'm not, I'm not your... I was about to say something that might have been taken out of context, but you'd build what you want to build. As for situational items, there's obviously my favorite meme build, which is Steric's Gage with Black Cleaver and Titanic Hydra, the tank set, and then you add a Bork on that. Your burst is pretty fucking shit, but um, you have a very, very annoying, consistent damage build uh, that works fairly well, actually. The only problem is that you're obviously falling a bit, because we're talking about four items plus boots. You have five items, you have one situational item, which usually would be Yomus, which would be only two. 20 lethality Not that good anymore, but if you feel like you're having problems against burst and they're all super squishy you can make this work um, Because you just might not need the Your own burst as much because you can manage with the titanic burst. It's a decent build um, You don't necessarily need to buy sterics with titanic, but you know, it works fine. You also get an ex excuse to do the very burst heavy um, early game, so you know, it's a fine build. That's Whisper, and I'm leaving it at the unupgraded one because both of these are viable. If they, you're not playing against super tanks, then um, Mortar Reminder is fantastic. Like, genuinely fantastic. Um, the uh, <coughs> Grievous Wounds is so useful, it, it's severely underestimated. But if you're playing against tanks, then obviously 50, plus 15% 15 physical damage is pretty huge. Add that with Bork or any of the other of your uh, arm penetration and shredding items, and, you, and it's just gonna eat right through them. And now we come to the most difficult part of this video. Edge of Night. The most edgy name of an item. I can't play them, it's a pretty cool item. So, do I like Edge of Night? I'm not sure yet. I'm really not sure yet. I think it's good. I think that I think that with the right circumstances, it's a very it's a solid item that definitely does um, have its place. <laughs> but it's no CDR. And it's not a safe item. And again, it's lethality, which means you shouldn't rush it. And it's just like a downgraded version of the old Maw, which was super good. <laughs> uh, I don't know, guys. I think for duels, it's really good. I think combined with all the other lethality, you can get some, to some ridiculous heights of arm penetration with it. But... Uh, let me get back to you on this one. I'm still not sure. 
I haven't had any good experiences with the item, but I keep looking at it and keep saying this has to be, this has to be good. It has to be good. Maybe I'm just bad. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, let's let's move on. Well, obviously, if you if you built the um, axe drinker, not much else to say about that. Finish it off eventually. Um, if you feel like you need the CDR, you can finish it off early, which is actually interesting. Um, finishing Maw off early is not as bad of a th as bad of a concept as it used to be. People used to be uh, angry at me for finishing Maw early game because you. I mean, I used to be angry at me for finishing Maw early game because you'd sit with zero percent CDR after your first completed item and then I'd run into a Dirk which should still be 0% CDR and then you finish boots still 0% CDR and then you'd get 10% CDR with Warhammer but now you get 10% CDR and more so going this early game is not that bad of it not not that bad at all um, Scimitar is straightforward if they have a lot of CC that is preventing you and uh, like very hard targeting you doesn't hurt to buy it. Um, if there's something like a Mulls of Heart, even, I would even recommend going at QSS in the uh, early game. Not as a first item, obviously, but in the early game, going QSS doesn't hurt at all, so. Um, I think that should be it. Uh, you could always add a Elixir here of, uh, what's it called? Elixir of Wrath? I don't even remember. Let's double check. Consumables. Elixir of Wrath, yep. Um, so that should be it. Like I said, I'll get back to you on extra details on this, and I just realized that I'm gonna have to add boxes for the item names up here, so I'm sorry, future Azo, you're gonna have to do some editing on this. Sorry, man. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll, um, get back to you with a proper size good video. Um, basically, probably just repeating a lot of this, because I don't think I'm gonna change my opinion a lot, but I will do a real set school video going through all the items so in other case i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions about the build or anything you'd like to add uh sure make sure to post it in the comments yeah um i'm gonna get back to you i have a very important video coming soon that i need you all to watch um so if you're still watching by now then you just make sure to watch that as well so yeah i'll see you next time okay thanks for watching peace